now you have to do the intro because I finished my salad. Yay! <laughs> now that Phil's delayed us for so long. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the channel. I'm joined once again by my friends Phil and Morgan. As 2022 comes to a close, what better way <laughs> to ring in the new year on this channel than to take a look back at some of the movies we watched throughout the year? Obviously, there were so many good movies this year, and we couldn't possibly mention or even watch all of them. And so I do have a few honorable mentions. You know, today we're only going to be talking about our top 10. For me, some of my honorable mentions that didn't quite make it into that top 10 were things like Barbarian, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, The Menu, Pearl, The Northman, Prey, Elvis, and Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Some of those you might see pop back up in either of their list <laughs> throughout this video. And then also, just a disclaimer, of course, ranking movies is a little silly. You know, film is so subjective. Everyone has their own taste. So don't feel bad if any movie you enjoyed this year doesn't pop up in this video. Let us know your top 10 down in the comments below. So starting off, my number 10 of this past year was Scream 5, also known as Five Cream, <laughs> to some. Uh, as you've seen previously on this channel, I, we're all three big fans of the franchise. And for me, this movie just got better with each rewatch, and it had some pretty big shoes to fill, as this is the first one without Russ Craven. And so for me, I feel it did that, and I'm ready for Scream 6 because of it. Um, like I already said in like our uh, Scrisixum trailer reaction, <laughs> I am very mixed about this film, but I do enjoy it for what it is. You know, for a film that doesn't have, you know, Wes Craven involved in any capacity, I think it's the best version of a non-Wes Craven like Scream film that you like, you know, you could do. I think they kind of pulled it off because a lot of people were skeptical because of that, me included. And I, I think, for, I think it's a solid slasher flick, uh, for for what it is. It's it's it falls in my honorable mentions. It's in my like top fifteen, not quite in my top ten, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, my it's it's <laughs> higher on my list, so we'll get there. But um, <laughs> yeah, I obviously really like that movie too. Um. And then moving on, my number nine for the year is uh, Ty West X. This is a little horror thriller movie, little horror comedy about a group of friends who have to make an um, adult film in the 70s on a remote ranch in Texas. And just all the hijinks and horror that ensue with that one. For me, it was just, it's just a really fun time. It's that tight. Yeah, that tight 90, <laughs> good short runtime. You know, it builds and it actually has a bit deeper of a message than I guess going into the film I expected. And so I was just caught off guard by this movie and it ended up one of my favorites of the year. I, I really enjoyed X. I wasn't expect. I didn't know what to expect really from like the trailers or anything. And it took me a while after the film came out and I saw a bunch of out of context like clips and stuff on like twitter and like screenshots but i didn't really know like i thought i knew like the twist but i had no idea going in and i another one of my favorite horror films is texas chainsaw and this is very much a a an homage to that and so i i really like that kind of aesthetic and the like you said the deeper elements i like that it's a story about like ageism and like you know you know the you know sex and how it's perceived and the you know the industry and stuff like that i thought it was just like a unique message that we don't really see like talked about a lot in in films so that was i thought it was a neat little, little flick i didn't watch it <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna need a counter in the corner for morgan didn't watch that one because oh god i'm a bad film student anywho <laughs> Uh, I believe we all saw this one, though. Uh, my number eight of the year is Jordan Peele's Nope. 
And so for this one, obviously, if you have not seen this movie yet, avoid any spoilers if you have to this point, because so much of this movie for me was the writing, the subversion of expectations, you know. We all went in kind of knowing it's an alien movie, but for me, it's not your traditional alien movie, so to say. The actors are putting in their all. Kiki Palmer and Daniel Kaluuya really bring it in this film. It's got some of the best day for night shooting in recent films I've seen in a while. I say it all the time to these two. I hate modern day for night where we go realistic (laughs) and I can't see anything. (laughs) I miss the movies when nighttime was just blue. (laughs) <laughs> and so for this one just from a production standpoint and a writing standpoint really one of my favorites from the year yeah yeah nope is uh is in my top three i loved it it's my favorite jordan peele film and i i i, I thought that coming out of the theater and i still believe that now it's my favorite jordan peele film and it's just i love the suspense and like like thrill because a lot of movies call them thrill themselves thrillers and they're not really but i was in the theater for this movie and my heart was pumping like it was it was it was really intense and it's been a while since i've kind of felt that kind of terror in in a movie theater and i loved every second of it yeah it's so good it's so fucking good it's uh i think it's my number nine i like i said in the scream video i don't really do like scary but it wasn't that scary like there were a couple of jump scares but i thought it was fine um i thought it was really smart i thought the writing was like fucking amazing like so good and just like every twist and turn at the end like the way they figured things out like i just i loved it And moving on down to number seven, I'm pretty sure I think I'm the only one here who saw it as of now. <laughs> <laughs> Avatar The Way of Water. Avatar 2 Aquatic Boogaloo. <laughs> so. Avatar, if you will. <laughs> but yeah, for me, this movie, obviously, people say it all the time. I'm not saying anything new. The VFX are amazing. They're incredible. You know, no, you watch it and you understand why James Cameron took 13 years to make this movie. (laughs) Because it is just a spectacle to take in. The actors are bringing their game. Sam Worthington and Zoe Saldana bring it this game. They've got great reactions. They brought some emotions out of me, which I wasn't expecting from an Avatar sequel. (laughs) It's just a very personal story. You know, it's focused on those characters again from that first film. It was worth the wait and one of my favorites from the year. Number six is one I was not expecting or really looking forward to because I didn't really like the first one. But it came in as a big surprise and took over as my favorite animated film of the year, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. This film has beautiful animation, obviously inspired by more recent films like Spider-Verse and things like that. And I just, I wasn't expecting to cry during a Puss in Boots movie. (laughs) Big fan of the Shrek franchise, but like I said, did not like that first one. But this one's a lot deeper, so to say. You know, Puss is struggling with that mortality and the idea of his last life, like you've seen in the trailers. I'm not going into any spoilers here because I feel the more spoiler-free you go into the movie, the better. But it's got some of the best DreamWorks villains. And just overall, for me, (laughs) whenever anyone asks, I say DreamWorks is back, baby. What he said. No. (laughs) um, I Yeah, basically everything that Connor said already. The animation, great. uh, Story, great. The voice acting, I I thought was really great. It was like a really good cast. And I'm not going to spoil because some of some of the people I didn't know were going to be in the film were, and I was pleasantly surprised. And yeah, probably the best DreamWorks villains, just period. Like I I thought that was that was that was everything was really cool. Even the action was really good, which you wouldn't really expect for an animated movie. And also, there's a song uh, called <laughs> "Fearless Hero" in there, and I've been listening to it on spotify on repeat since i saw it it's it's so catchy so good but like not i don't think there's a single aspect of this movie that was like weak like they tried their heart they went they went it all in so yeah i adore it which i you know i like connor i wasn't expecting because Puss in Boots, the first Puss in Boots is okay 
Um, I would put it like over Shrek the Third in terms of <laughs> ranking, like Shrek the Third being at the very bottom, and then kind of you have the first Puss in Boots. And then this movie was in development for so long that I was like, that's that's never gonna happen. And then the trailer came out, and I was like, mm, it looks okay. And then seeing it, everyone like having you know this outpour of love for it, I was like, okay, I guess I'll check it out. I was still a little skeptical because I was like, okay, maybe it's a little overhyped, but it really does. It just lives up to it everything you hear like i would see it in theaters i would recommend that um yeah it's 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 great i didn't watch that <laughs> one either <laughs> okay so we just talked about puss and boots which uh just barely made it into my top 10 I, along with uh guillermo del toro's pinocchio which I just I love stop motion animation. So like anything, I'm just gonna shill over that. I I I love I love stop motion animation. So the animation in that movie is beautiful, and if you just love Guillermo del Toro's film uh, making, uh, you'll just you'll love that movie. There's there's not much to say about it that hasn't already been said. And then above that, I had uh, Wakanda Forever because uh, mm -hmm. you got a shark. You got a shill for Marvel, of course. <laughs> we're in this. We're in the Spider Man that he had everything. No, but I think I've just been kind of a little bit disappointed by Phase 4 of Marvel, and I was really let down, so I really didn't know what to expect. Like, I didn't have really a lot of expectations. Like, I knew it had to be at least good, but it was way better than that. It was it was it's great just because Marvel's been turning in some really subpar stuff, and then to, out of nowhere, just come back. It was, it's, you know, talking about comebacks like DreamWorks with Puss in Boots, I feel like Wakanda Forever is almost a little bit of a return to form for Marvel, and I hope they kind of keep that up. For number seven, I have the menu, which just mm. which was your honorable mention. It just barely made it into your top ten. But I something about that film really <laughs> spoke to me, and I'm so excited that it'll be on HBO Max soon because uh, I can't wait to rewatch it. But it's just it's a really like touching film about what it's like to be an artist. And I, that really just spoke very deeply to me. And all the performances in that movie are good. Anya Taylor-Joy, Ralph Fiennes, all of it is uh, is really good. And then for number six, I have X. Uh, like my number 10, I keep flip-flopping because I can't like figure out what to put there. Right now it's Werewolf by Night because um, I just, I loved it. I thought it was great. Just like stylistically very different. But like I keep looking at the stuff underneath it and I'm like, no, nothing else really like deserves that spot over that. So that's just kind of what's there right now. But anywho, um, and then I have Nope number nine, the invitation number <laughs> eight, which I know objectively bad movie. <laughs> However, <laughs> I loved it. Like as a vampire girl, it was made for me. It was made for me. And I saw it twice in theaters. I have no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's gonna be one of those like on in the background kind of movies when i'm doing stuff um oh i had uh chippendale rescue rangers as number seven i fucking love that movie i thought it was like just so unexpected because mm -hmm. i went in like expecting kind of a like bad movie and then like the writing was crazy and just, like, everything that they mentioned and made nods at and, like, all of the stuff that made it, like, in terms of Easter eggs in the animation and just, like, the the concept of it as a whole. I was fucking blown away. <laughs> like, it was crazy. Um, yeah, totally did not expect to like it at all, let alone have it be, like, what it was. Mm -hmm. And then seven, like I said, Chippendale, and then number six is uh, Black Panther, because like Phil said, it, it was amazing. Phase four needed a win, like really bad. Like yeah. I my my hopes were lowered so badly from like everything that came before that. And I was like, well, it has to be good. Obviously, it's going to be good. Like it needs to be. <laughs> what am I going to do if it's not? And then it was like really good. So, yeah, there she is. But and there's so many women in it. I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. Passes the Bechtel test like so much. <laughs> it's the score for me. Another soundtrack. Yeah. The really siren good. call. Oh my god! I can't. So stop. good. It's so, like uh, Ludwig. Ludwig is is a god. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> What's he cooking? 
And so for me, number five is the Batman. Kind of like you guys are saying about Marvel and DreamWorks, for me, DC needed a win. I think we can all <laughs> agree on that one. Yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> Matt Reeves came out of the gate with this slow burn superhero movie that just perfectly captured for me. It's got the comic book vibes, but it's not as grounded as Nolan so that it's still... It's not silly, goofy, like Schumacher, so to say. Not to say I don't like those. <laughs> but it's grounded, but still comic booky. And then the score and the visuals are bonkers in that movie. You know, it's one of the best-looking superhero movies, in my opinion. And I just, I really liked Battinson. I liked everyone in that movie. <laughs> so, just overall, a really good comic book movie. And I liked it. Just a really good movie at the end of the day. To get to it. But my number five is Pearl. Uh, as I just stated. Just because I just... I love the aesthetic of it. It's very visually pleasing for like a Technicolor. Kind of like, you know, A24's like Midsommar. Where it's just like colorful and bright. But also horror. You know, because that's not genuinely something you mix together. And so, you know, just to have such a bright, poppy film. <laughs> And then you uh, you have Mia Goth's like performance just on top of all that. It's just a really, really good horror flick. <laughs> uh, my number five is Glass Onion, which I watched this afternoon. <laughs> Very fresh rating, but um, okay. as I said in the Scream movie or Scream movie Scream video, um, I love a Who Done It. I love a murder mystery. I love a twist. Um, I just yeah, everything about that movie so clever, so smart. Love it. So then moving on up number four, I know I'm the only one out of the three of us that has this here. <laughs> and that's I love how much you love this movie. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Top Gun Maverick. This movie is just the definition of the rule of cool. It's just it's just loud music, fast planes, Tom Cruise hamming it up, living his best life. You know. The fact that he actually goes out and flies those planes because he's crazy. <laughs> Instead of, you know, sitting in a CGI cockpit. It's just, this movie's just cool. And for me, it's one of those few movies these days that uses nostalgia just right. A lot of callbacks to that first film that, you know, could be hokey in other franchises. Or is that other franchises, you know, would hold it up so high, you know. Versus this one's just kind of, you know, haha, he did that in the first one. Moving on. <laughs> like I said, Tom Cruise is insane. So much action in camera, you know, a lot of long sweeping takes because they're actually flying these planes. <laughs> and just, yeah, this movie's just cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to it at some point, I promise. <laughs> Both of them, because I have Same. not seen, haven't seen either Top Gun. <laughs> My number four is, gee, where have we heard of this one before? It's the Batman. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, it's just, it's just good. I don't even know what I could say that hasn't been said about this movie enough. Like it's, it's a Batman comic come to life. It's just, just everything about it. Um, I, I just, the, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I'm at a loss for words. I, I love what this film does with, Riddler, first off, who's like one of my favorite Batman villains, and who was one I was kind of sad to not see in like the Nolan trilogy because I know Nolan kind of had plans and wanted to do him for the third film, and then ended up doing Bane. Uh, so I was very sad because I wanted to see the Riddler, and I remember being like twelve and like surviving off of the deviant art photoshops of like <laughs> David Tennant as the Riddler, and just like praying like one day we'll get a good Riddler. And yeah, Paul Dano as the Riddler is just so good. I love the like Zodiac Killer parallels and everything that they do like this, you know, kind of seven homage that this film is. Um, the only critique I would have is just that it's maybe a little too long. But other than that, I just it's, it's really well done. And Matt Reeves is another genius who's just like really killing it. Uh, my number four is Elvis. Um, I don't have anything to say for myself. <laughs> just, 
I like all the weird camera angles at the beginning with like the spinning stuff and ooh, flashy colors. I was like, this is cinema. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the fact that Austin Butler like sold his soul for this movie and he still has the accent. Like <laughs> some dedication. I I love the music. I loved specifically like the remixes. Like I forget which song it was of his that they remixed with Toxic by Britney Spears. I was like, I don't know what's in this, but I love it. <laughs> like yeah, I just thought it was great. I love when movies like play with the different time periods and like all the period costumes and stuff like that. I just yeah, thought it was great. Moving on up to number 3, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one here who saw it. And that's RRR. This is a film from India. And it is so... (laughs) It's streaming on Netflix right now. If you have Netflix, you have no excuse to not watch it. Minus it is long. It is a three-hour movie. But it does have, like, a break cut to black in the middle of the movie as if there is an intermission. So if you really want, you could break it up into two 90-minute viewings. This one had its hooks in me. Similar to Top Gun, this movie kind (laughs) of lives by the rule of cool. This movie, it's based loosely, very loosely, (laughs) on two real revolutionaries. And so they hold, this movie treats these two like they're superheroes. They fly, they punch through walls. (laughs) They've got Hawkeye skills with a bow. It is just... This movie's just cool. And so much of that action, obviously aided by CGI, but the action, the wire work, I eat that kind of stuff up. <laughs> this one, I just watched it yesterday, and it you see right up to the top. My number three is Note, which I already <laughs> said how much I love. So see before. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my number three is Bullet Train, uh, which I fucking loved. Like, I just, I didn't, you're going to have to bleep me out so much. I'm so sorry. Any, <laughs> I, I loved it. Like, I, again, with me, it's the writing. Like, the writing was so good. I love the twists and the turns and everyone's acting was so, so, so good. Um, is Joey King her name? I loved her little outfit. <laughs> I would like to wear that <laughs> forever. <laughs> All the pink, the schoolgirl loved it. Loved the costumes. Loved the, like, the backstory with the twins and everything. And, like, everyone just had really good chemistry. You could tell they were having a grand old time. Um, And I love movies that are contained, like, on a train or a cruise ship or an airplane. Like, that's so fun to, like, play with the limits of that. And then, like, do they get off at a stop? How do they get back on the train? Like, all of that stuff. Loved it. It's a rare Sony W. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking now at my second favorite movie of the year. <laughs> Morgan mentioned it earlier is Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Uh, I agree with Mr. Johnson. I hate the A Knives Out Mystery tag on. I get you need it for marketing. But yeah, Ryan Johnson, don't miss. We know this from Knives <laughs> Out, The Last Jedi, Looper. And so for this film, it's no different. The writing is firing on full cylinders. He is in his element here. And then Daniel Craig is eating it up. He is, him and he says in interviews that, you know, it's him and Johnson crafting this character. And you can just tell, like, well, he might have enjoyed James Bond. He is. <laughs> Benoit Blanc is his <laughs> bread and butter. <laughs> yeah. And this movie, similar to, like I said, with Scream, you know, it's a whodunit. It's a murder mystery. It just gets better every time you rewatch it. <laughs> so, yeah, my second favorite of the year. Wins. Because <laughs> mine, is, mine is also Glass <laughs> Onion. <laughs> My number two is Glass Onion. And I, I love murder mysteries so much. Agatha Christie, I eat that stuff right up. I I just I enjoy it. And oh, everything about this movie is good. Gore, cast, costumes. Like all of it is just so good. And it makes me mad because Ryan Johnson's brain is so huge. And he can pump <laughs> these movies out just like every two to three years. Like, he could just do that. He doesn't, like, have to take that much time to just come up with something this good. 
it's just it's it it's crazy. And I I like because usually you would kind of kind of wince at the idea of doing a murder mystery, but in modern day, it's like uh you know that's a bit of a dated genre. Could you really even do that in the modern day? And Ryan Johnson is just like, hold my beer, I'll show you. And you know these I I want a million of these movies. I I I I just I found my new favorite franchise. Yeah, I agree. I, when I finished watching it, I was like, so we're getting like 17 more of these, right? <laughs> like, please. <laughs> My number two is Scream. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. It just, it came at a great point in my life I just, <laughs> great um i yeah i don't know i loved it i love a whodunit um and especially after i think what really really pushed it to the top for me was i watched all of them except for the first one for the first time like in a row and then went to see that one i was like oh this is peak cinema okay great <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it's just stayed there but i yeah i loved it i'm not a horror gal i'm a vampire gal but not a horror gal which is ironic but um no, I loved it. Anywho. <laughs> and then we've made it to the big one. Oh, God. Wow. This is where the Ooh. internet either praises or cancels <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> and my number one movie of the year is Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. My favorite film of the year <laughs> is no secret to anyone who knows me everything everywhere all at once was just a movie that captured my heart because there's just so much love put into this movie you know it's such a small contained kind of like morgan said about bullet train it pretty much all takes place in just an office building but it's got so much heart the cast between Michelle Yeoh and Ki Hee Kwan both carrying this film so hard. <laughs> you know, I cried, I laughed, all of the felt all the emotions throughout the whole thing. It is visually beautiful, and it's an editor's wet dream. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't win that Oscar, that's it. They're done. <laughs> Yeah, that's my number one, too. Uh, we saw that film together, and it was just instantly, it was just like, I don't think anything that comes out this year can beat it because it's just that good. And you know a movie is is like, you could basically say perfect when everyone is like, oh, if you like everything everywhere all at once, then you're just basic. Now, it's, you know, funny how film discourse has already immediately turned on it, and that's how you know it's good. That's how you know it's like, like up there with one of the greatest films of all time. It's just like, everything down to like the visual effects being like the the team being seven people seven people doing all of the visual effects and learning off of youtube tutorials and they pulled this off it's just like what that's that's insane and then michelle yo turning in like one of the best performances of her career it's just uh oh i don't know i think i would need a whole video to just kind of describe my love for this film and it's also been a while since a movie has made me like straight up cry in the theaters. And I'm not like, there's been plenty of movies that have made me tear up, but cry. Now that's, that's the thing. And that, that's what this movie did. And that's, that's an achievement. It's just, I have to give it so much credit. I love, I adore this film. The only reason it's not my number one is I have not seen it. <laughs> I've heard so many good things about it. Like the weekend that it came out, all of my like film class friends went to see it and I went to see Sonic 2 with these bozos. <laughs> so I, I didn't get to go like, and all of my friends, like I felt bad, like asking them to go like again and be like annoying, you know, but I, I'm sure they would have loved to. But anywho, I'm just awkward. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I never thought I'd be in a place in my life where I'd say my movie of the year is Batman, like, ever. I, I've i never been, like, a Batman fan. Like, I, this is going to get me murdered. But I think sometimes he could be a little overrated. I don't know. Like, I've seen other Batman films. I think he's okay. Like, as a character, he's never been my favorite DC character. But that said, the Batman fucking cinema <laughs> i just like i think two or three times a week i think about the flare scene like it's just it's so beautiful i battinson 
kills it. Like, he's so good. Um, and I was a Twilight girly growing up. That should not be a surprise to anyone. But, <laughs> like, I... I love watching him, like, rise, like, in his career. And I feel like this is finally, like, the tipping point. Because he's been in indie stuff and he's he's been in stuff that people like since Twilight. But, like, this is kind of the tipping point, like, pushing him back into the mainstream. Um, And I really love that for him. I think all of the actors were great. Colin Farrell as the Penguin is amazing. Like, I can't wait to see where that goes. And I love that, like... It was funny in a way that wasn't, like, when Marvel is funny. Like, how, like, they're like, oh, haha, we told a joke. Tony Stark's so funny. It was just like, oh, thumb drive. And you get, like, the most morbid chuckle in your entire life. And I just, I love that it was just kind of, like, very subtly funny. Very comic booky. Loved the lighting and, like, the color scheme and the score. Oh, my God, the score. Like, I, yeah. I loved it. <laughs> DC really, 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 really needed that one. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to see where that little chunk of the universe goes from here. Thank you so much for watching our look at 2022 and the movies that came out and some of our favorites. Like I said in the intro, we couldn't cover everything that came out this year. If something we didn't mention was one of your favorites let us know down in the comments below as always have a good one and i'll see y'all in the next one bye